Hey guys, it's Tuesday, 1.16 p.m. on August 7th, 2018, and I discovered something really cool yesterday. My folks have this huge screen TV. I don't even have a TV, but they do, and you can watch YouTube videos on their huge TV, which I decided today to take advantage of that and watch Mental Boost videos on that big TV. Now, when I was doing that, my mom came in and she's like, what are you watching? What are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I just want to see this guy. He does these great videos on these California fires. Links will be in the description. And uh, so she came in and she started watching with me. And I was saying as I was watching, I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I'm like, that's so messed up. I kept saying, that's so messed up. And she's like, what? What? And I was like, don't you see? Don't you understand? And she didn't understand what I was, what I was concerned about. So I hope Mental Boost doesn't mind that I'm doing this, but I'm going to give a commentary on what I see Mental Boost is pointing out. It's, it's obvious to me, but it may not be obvious to a lot of people. So I'm going to share with you my, uh, my opinion, okay? I'm, I'm not a fire marshal. I do have a college degree plus. Um, I have had many physics and many chemistry classes in my life. I have decades worth of observing fires. Uh, both outdoor fires and indoor fires and fireplaces and and stuff like this. I've seen many California fires and the post situation of California fires. And so that is what this opinion is based on. Now, let me show you what I'm seeing. What I'm seeing here is what looks like what I have always seen of an outdoor brush fire or forest fire. This is what it typically looks like at the end of a forest fire or brush fire. Why? Well, let's take a peek at what it looked like beforehand, okay? Before the fire, all right, you had tons of grasses, you had tons of pine needles, you had tons of shrubs, you had tons of foliage all over these trees. After the forest fire, all of what's called the kindling, those grasses, those shrubs, those pine needles, those things are all gone after a forest fire. So this, because that's what gets consumed and these fires roll rapidly. These are words that you just hear on reports of typical forest fires. Kindling, rapid, you know, it's because this stuff burns quickly. If you've ever had a bonfire, you know that if you put in pine needles, you're going to get your fire going, but it's going to burn out super quick. And that's exactly what happened here. And I want you to notice something. All the stuff that's left behind is thicker than a pinky finger. And nearly everything smaller than a pinky finger diameter has been consumed, right? You see the entire trunks of the trees have been left. You see branches about the size of a pinky finger did not have time to get completely consumed in the fire. But everything smaller than a pinky finger did. So that's why when we come over here, this is by the way the Whiskey Town Lake California fire, that's why when he pans around over here and he actually shows this, I said, oh my gosh, that is so messed up. And you guys, this is so messed up. Now, this wasn't obvious to my mom, and it's not that my mom's not bright. She's super bright, you guys. She's very educated. Let me tell you what we're seeing here. This is a guardrail on, on a road, and the whole thing has fallen down. Now, he shows other guardrails here that are even more messed up because they're bent and warped and stuff. But one thing that's consistent is these guardrails have all fallen down. Why? Because the parts that are holding these guardrails together, let me just show you how it's constructed. This square holding the guardrail to its post consume, was consumed entirely by fire. You guys, there is a huge problem with this. As I just pointed out, right here, in the typical rolling forest fire, everything smaller than a pinky finger was consumed, but everything bigger than a pinky finger was not consumed. Notice, anything thicker than your pinky finger did not have time to burn cons con totally. And yet, right here, we see that this thing, which is at least four by four by 10, this entire piece of wood was consumed. Now there's very strange things happening here. Not only is this a piece of material of wood that is 
dense and, and huge should con could should require a tremendous amount of exposure to fire and a long period of time to burn. Not only that, you guys, but it's it's sandwiched between a pole and metal here. So the, the piece that is the least exposed to oxygen, consumed with the greatest destruction, okay, whereas the twigs behind it, which are a fraction of the density of this wood, these pieces that were exposed to full oxygen didn't hardly get consumed, didn't get consumed at all. So here's the anomaly, you guys. These pieces, which are dozens of times thicker than these twigs, which were exposed to half the oxygen as these, burned more rapidly and more completely than the things that were of far less denser and full exposure to oxygen. This is the problem. So what is the one distinctive variable? And it's not just these pylons, the, the bulk of wood in these pylons here, it's also, you guys, the four by four by six or eight or 10, or I don't know how long, the, how high these posts are. It's the entire post that held up the sign, except for this little chunk here, that little piece of wood there. That's the only part that didn't burn. Everything else burned entirely and completely. How did that happen? I want you to look. There's a twig here that can't be any fatter than a pencil. It did not burn. It had full exposure to oxygen, and yet the four by fours that were holding up this 10 foot sign, gone. There's one thing that is in these four by four by 10 poles or posts, wooden posts. There's one thing that distinguishes them from these twigs, one thing. And this is it, you guys, right here. This is the one thing that distinguishes the wood that was completely consumed, the most dense wood that was completely consumed and the tiny little twigs that weren't even hardly touched at all. The fact that those blocks of wood had a metal conductor shot right through them. That's the problem. That's the problem, is that these guardrails, you guys, are nothing but electromagnetic conductors. And the one thing that was consistent about every piece of wood that was thoroughly consumed, the most dense, least oxygen exposed chunks of wood that burned to facilitate this from, from falling off its base was the fact that every single one of those pieces of wood had electromagnetic conductors in them. That's what's so shocking here. Okay, so look for that. Look for that. The wood that has the electromagnetic conductor going through it, that's the wood that burns the most thoroughly. Now, I also want to make a comment here about what this guy has to say, this news reporter. And I want, to, I want you guys to think a little bit about like programming and uh, the nonsense that these guys talk about. I went to, I, I, just some of the words that he used just kind of struck me as odd. So let's listen to this. I'm extreme meteorologist Reed Timmer, just south of French Gulf. Extreme meteorologist. He's the extreme meteorologist. He's not just a meteorologist. He's the extreme meteorologist. California. We're about a little bit southeast of the core of the car fire right now. It has been pushed off to the west. Uh the fire has been pushed? What pushed the fire? Toward the uh, Trinity County area, up toward Trinity Mountain, to the east of Trinity Dam as well. But so far, the winds are beginning to increase. They're switching around to westerly, and there is a fire weather watch in place beginning at 8 there's a what? A fire weather watch. In a fire weather watch. Okay, you guys, weather is defined as a state, the state of the atmosphere. You guys, the atmosphere is up above at a given time and place with respect to variables such as temperature, moisture, wind velocity, and barometric pressure. There is no such thing as fire weather. There is such a thing as weather that is conducive to fire conditions, that weather conditions that can make a fire worse, drought, uh, low humidity, high winds. Those are weather conditions that are conducive to fire. But you guys, there's no such thing as fire weather. I want you to hear again what he said, because this idea of the new normal, you guys, 
this is not normal. This is not normal. And these are vocabulary words, you guys, that they're introducing into our psyche that are compromising your intellectual integrity. Let's listen one more time. Trinity County area up toward Trinity Mountain to the east of Trinity Dam as well. But so far, the winds are beginning to increase. They're switching around to westerly, and there is a fire weather watch in place beginning at 8 p.m. tonight. Winds are expected to increase up to 30 miles an hour or even more and then switch around to the westerly. And those higher, higher wind gusts will be found up in the higher ridges where the fire is currently burning. And that's right now beginning to transport all of that smoke over to the Redding area. So we do expect the air quality to continue to decrease. And it is possible that this wildfire could further expand depending on how much fuel there is available off to its east. Okay, let me just point out again that the word fuel is what there, it's, it's another word for a kindling, okay? And, and what he doesn't point out is so very obvious here, you guys. What he doesn't point out is that for some reason all the twigs stayed unburned, like unconsumed, and yet the 4 by 4 posts that held the sign up, okay, that are, cons are completely gone, and the entire railing system is gone, and the only thing that distinguishes those big, fat, dense pieces of wood is the electromagnetic conductor that we call nails and bolts that ran through those pieces of wood. Nobody's paying attention to that. Big, big problem. Okay, so I just want to play this at the end where you have the, the news reporter guy just pointing out that there are so many guard railings down. And, uh... That are fixing uh, power lines, that there's road crews on the road that are working on putting up those guardrails, all of the guardrails road crews on the road that are working on putting up those guardrails, just all of the guardrails, just all of the guardrails. All of the guardrails. You guys, this is a big deal because those guardrails should not have burned. They are far thicker than any of these twigs that did not get fully consumed. There's absolutely no reason whatsoever, with the exception of the fact that there is an electromagnetic conductor running through every piece of wood that was thoroughly consumed by this fire. That's the problem. That's what this video points out. And I put, I'll put the links in the description. You guys, please go subscribe to Mental Boost channel. And I will continue to pro provide some uh, commentary on these videos because he's pointing things out in a great way. And I'm, I'm curious to get your feedback on these things.